Genesis chapter 2 verses 18 to 24. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me. So from the soil the Lord God fashioned all the wild beasts and all the birds to heaven. These he brought to the man to see what he would call them. Each one was to bear the name the man would give it. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of heaven, and all the wild beasts. But no helpmate suitable for man was found for him. So the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and he closed it in the flesh. The Lord God knew the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. The man exclaimed, This is at last is bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. This is to be called woman, for this was taken from man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and joins himself to his wife, and then become one body. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you be to God. The response to the song on the bottom of page two, and the top of page three, we hope you have your attention. Heavy are those who do what the Lord commands. Heavy are those who were feared Yahweh by joyfully keeping his commandments. Their children will be powers on earth, the descendants of the Yahweh will be blessed. Heavy are those who do what the Lord commands. There will be riches and wealth for the families. Their righteousness can never change. For the upright shine like a lamp in the dark. They are merciful, tender hearted, and virtuous. A reading from the first letter of John. My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes from God, and everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails in love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world His only Son, so that we could have life through Him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when He sent His Son to sacrifice and takes our sins away. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God. But as long as we love one another, God will live in us, and his love will be complete with us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing, and it can only be thrown out to be trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. Neither does anyone light a candle and hide it under a tub. Rather, they place it on the lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before the sight of others, so that seeing your good works, they may give praise to your Father in heaven. And this, for our daily living, is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Salt and light, those are two items or substances we don't really think too much about. We take them pretty much for granted. Today, when you came in this church, you expected, you know, that light would be on. Electricity would be working, of course. And tonight at the hall, you'll expect the same type of thing. You'll walk in there without even thinking about it and expect to be able to see the food that you're going to eat. And later on, they'll turn the lights down a little dimmer. we are going to have some dancing. And you'll think nothing of it. And then later on, still, you'll get into the car and pull the switch. And your car lights will come on and you'll drive home probably very late this evening. And it's something, again, that we just take for granted. But in the time of Christ, light was something very precious. It was something very, very rare, and at best, very expensive. And most people had, the only light they had was basically the sun itself. And when the sun came down, people simply went to bed. And, you know, if they were wealthier, they had small clay pots, and they had little wicks inside of those, and they put oil inside of this clay container with the wick, and that would, it would light it. They had single room houses then. They didn't have our style of living. But they would shine it for everyone in the house. And as the gospel said, they didn't waste it, okay? They put it on the lampstand, a hook, where it shined for everyone because it was so costly and so dear. People were conservative with their use of the oil, even the wealthy. And again, they took care of it. It was something very precious. And same thing with salt. You know, we're told, don't use too much salt. It's bad for the, your body, your blood. You know, okay, it's bad for your blood pressure. Um, it's bad for the environment to throw too much on the streets. A little bit's all right, but not again in excess. But in the time of Christ, you know, that was one of the few means people had to make their food taste better, the substance salt. And so people watched every grain. They didn't take it like we do when you go to the restaurant and just knock it over on the table or else throw those little packets away, you know, again, trying to save your health. They took every little single grain of salt very carefully because it was expensive. It was costly and it was dear. We stop and think the word love. How many ways do we use that word? You know, I love God, I love my parents, I love my father for Father's Day, I love my country, Operation Desert Storm. You know, I love God, again, I love your dog, I love your dress, um, I love to eat, I love to travel. Again, we use it in so many different ways. We even have that heart symbol now. I love St. Anne, I love Detroit. You know, I love so many, many things. And sometimes it's very easy because the word is so overly used, you know, to, it's very easy to miss the point of what love really is about. And today, this is the reminder that the church gives us, you know, that love is a calling at its very deepest level. It's a calling that comes from God himself. And today, it's an invitation to the two of you, as it is to every married couple, but again, the two of you, Cheryl and Michael, to join your lives together. Everything that you have, everything that you are, all your plans, all your dreams, and even everything that you never will become, you know, plus a whole unknown future. It's an invitation by God to go even deeper than that, okay? It's an invitation by God for the two of you, for better, for worse, sickness, health, which are poor, to join your lives together with the person of Jesus Christ. We believe this is what makes your marriage a sacrament. It's not just the two of you, but it's the three of you. And as the two of you, Michael and Cheryl, learn to love and grow in your love and to live it out daily, so more visible will become this presence of Christ who lives in you and who shares in your gift of love. I guess, you know, there's lots of things to say to you, you know, you, Michael, I've known a long time, so. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of good. It's good to have watched you grow up in many ways and, you know, to watch the both of you on this, on this very important day of your lives. Uh, you know, but I guess, you know, take your time. Be patient with one another. Uh, keep doing the small things that brought you to this point and the small things, you know, that really cemented your relationship. Continue to say I love you to one another. Continue to say I thank you for one another. And continue to really strive to 
look out for and to be the inmost desire of each other's heart. I think, you know, this is the point where your love today becomes public. It's, you know, you've come to know each other through a period of time, certainly, but everyone will recognize you as husband and wife, you know, in a few short moments for the rest of your lives. And this is like when a seed comes out of the ground. It still takes time. It's not mature fully yet. You know, you have years together, hopefully, with a lot of happiness and, you know, a lot of unexpected things as well, I suppose, a lot of children and whatever, you know, to make your lives again fruitful and to live to the fullness of what God has called you to. So again, you know, rejoice in this love that God has given you. Cheryl, you should thank God each and every day, you know, no matter how angry or happy you may be, you know, I think for the gift that God gives you in Michael, and Michael, the very same for you, you know, thank God each and every day for the gift of Cheryl. And I think it's very important, you know, that you use this third party, Jesus Christ, in your relationship. I think beyond that, it's enough to wish you both for God's very choicest blessings, long life, much happiness, as you live out your calling, Michael and Cheryl, to be one with each other, and one also with the person again and presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.